Dawn in Africa forever brings the promise of untamed adventure. And it's that wildness that has lured hunters to the dark continent for generations. Two who are drawn are author Chris Dorsey and federal cartridges Mark DeYoung. Africa is still so remote and it's still so wild. That idea of the dark continent still looms heavy in portions of Africa. And the game is wild, the spaces are wild. That's hard to find, but you can find it here. It's just a great feeling to be in a situation like that, untamed, completely untamed. The thing that always impresses, no matter how many times you've been to Africa, when you come here and you see just the diversity of life. I mean, the whole food chain is here and you're stepping into the food chain. You're not stepping on top of the food chain here. And uh, you need to understand that this is an area at the Save Conservancy where the big five is alive and well. And the big five are called such because they're dangerous game. And it's a wonderful place to take it all in. This stretch of southern Zimbabwe is a hunter's dream. For Dorsey and DeYoung, the 16-hour flight to Africa was small penance for a chance to step into Eden. Chris, how are you doing? Joining Dorsey is Zimbabwe native and professional hunter Zane Vandemerva. Driving the sable hunt is seasoned guide Philip Reed. With 20 years experience, who better to lead avid outdoorsman DeYoung on this, his second safari. Grew up out in the West, and so I grew up with the outdoors as part of the lifestyle that we enjoyed in the West. And some of my fondest memories of my dad were field memories, and I've been able to share that lifestyle with my own boys. And uh, they both enjoy hunting, so we've made sure we've had opportunities to hunt together and go to great pheasant country and do some deer hunting together and do some turkey hunting together and respect the game and enjoy the conservation part of hunting. It's been a big part of our family. This trip to Zimbabwe is my second opportunity in Africa, and no matter how many times you come, you always want to come back. Not only because the game is exotic and the country is exotic, but you've heard about it, you grow up hearing about it, and then to be here and experience it is everything you've dreamed of. Federal Cartridge, in cooperation with Beretta and Sako, worked together to develop a new round of ammunition, which I brought on this hunt for its first trial for me on game like this, and it's the Federal 338. And what we've done is we've taken a great case, the 308 case, which is a fabulous design in a cartridge case. We've married that with maybe the best hunting bullet around, which is the 338 bullet. Putting those two together, we've come up with a new option for a larger bullet in a 338 with grain weights above 200 or 180 if he wishes. Good trajectory, similar to a 30 6 and very reasonable recoil. Makes it a lot of fun to shoot. Perfect height. Up and down's good. After removing any excuses, well, at least those that could be blamed on the rifle, the hunters strike off in search of Africa's riches of game. Eland are the largest of the antelope species, and the Livingston eland that they have here in Zimbabwe are just amazing. You look at them, it looks like a Brahma bull going through the bush, and yet you'll see them just leap over streams and hop over rocks like they're, you know, giant jackrabbits or something. It's amazing, an animal that size, we're talking 1,500 pounds, can surpass that kind of an obstacle without struggling at all. We've had a pretty good rainy season this year and that's led to thicker cover than normal for the time of the year that we're hunting in. We hadn't been seeing as much eland as we had hoped we would be. We saw one group of eland. Chris and I put in a couple of good approaches and stalks in on them, but there was no bull in there for us to shoot. At this time of the year, right now, the cover is very heavy and the numbers of sable are generally low in most areas. I mean, we've got one sable on quota, that tells you something. Fortunately, each group does have a big herd bull that stays with them all year round. They don't come in and out of the herds like other species of game do. So if you see a herd of sable, you know there's generally a big mature bull in that herd. I think on the third day, we were on our way back. We were gonna have lunch out in the bush somewhere. Came across Sable at midday. We got out of the truck, started to track them. We nearly got a shot at a nice bull then, but due to thick brush and that, we couldn't get the shot off. We got on the tracks, very tough tracking. 
the wind was wrong so we did a big circle and managed to get around them they spooked a little bit and they ran through into this opening about 180 yards okay, away set up here just wait that back one see the back one yeah okay there's a lot of brush between me and it He's it. I think he's it. Yeah, yeah. You could see that it had been hit and it bared off to the right, took off running. We went there, we struggled to find any blood initially and then finally we found one drop of blood. And so we carried on with the tracks and we must have followed until about midday. We were tired, we'd lost the tracks by then. And fortunately, we came across where the whole herd had bedded down. Where they had bedded down, we found just a couple of drops of blood there. That's all. Got back on the tracks. We followed them until dark that evening. The next morning, we came back into that area. They had run off. I mean, they now were very, very wary and very, very spooky. We found where the bull had slept that night. Again, one or two drops of blood. Our bull seemed to leave the herd early in the morning and we managed to pick him up. No trackers in the world surpass those found in Africa. So nowhere does a hunter stand a better chance of recovering wounded game. Reason for hope then when all might seem lost. The sable's just up there. I got Mark into position and the only thing you could see was the hump of the sable's back and he had to just estimate where the vitals were and that. I got him. I got him. He went down. He's going down. Come on. Come on. Come on. We pulled off a grad shot and on close examination of the bull, Mark's first shot had been deflected and it actually hit the animal in the horn. So that animal was not fatally wounded in any way. But for us to have tracked that animal for nearly 24 hours and then pick it up again, we were smiled upon by Lady Luck. That is for sure. Well done. Hey. Thank you very much. Hey. Lonnie, thank you very much. You. What a hunt. That's great. 24 That's great. hours. We were busy hunting zebra and Chris tapped me on the back and out of the corner of his eye he had caught a glimpse of something out there. He wasn't quite sure what it was. And I looked out with my binos and there were a couple of eeling cows. We saw a good bull amongst the cows. So we left the zebra alone and tried to get busy with the eeling. It's a more yeah, yeah, yeah. difficult animal to hunt. I see him now, broadside. Yeah, big gray, gray thing. He's, he's covered a little bit. Yeah, I think right. he's got to move. I can't take the yeah. shot there. Yeah, but you're on the right one. Yeah, yeah, I got him. I got him. There were two cows covering the bull. Chris was ready on the sticks. We were all ready for the cows to clear, and then the bull moved. Then we had to reposition ourselves. We had to keep moving, keep relocating, and it was clear the whole herd was getting edgier and edgier. So when we finally got into position, he spun around, so he's basically head up looking at me. I couldn't even see really most of his head, just kind of his chest, but had a good rest and uh, just put it right on the point of the shoulder, shot, and he just bucked and spun off and took off. And, and we did a follow-up shot as well, and it's just amazing to me how tough these animals are. 600 grains of lead sitting in that bull, and he's still chugging along, probably went two to 300 yards at least into heavy brush, and we finally caught up to him. And you walk up to an animal that size, and you're just awed by the sheer mass of this beast. My God, look at the size of these things. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Part of the real excitement of hunting on safari is that there's so many surprises every time you go out. And doing a plains game hunt, you could be stalking into zebra as we were and, and find Elon and change gears quickly and, and try to seize the moment. And fortunately, we did. Yeah. Old guy. 
He was the king of the roost, wasn't he? After 24 hours and after coming home to bed and getting up the next morning and picking it up again, it was very rewarding. It was just a tremendous feeling to finish what you started and harvest the same bull after that expanse of time and miles and miles on foot. I didn't think it was going to come together. And when it did, and when we saw that bull, and when I took the second shot and saw him go down, not only was it exhilarating, but it was a relief for me to make sure I finished what I started. For two distant travelers, Africa has once again delivered on her promise of unforgettable adventure. Reason enough to plan a return soon.